welcome to the H-Town Horseshoe. My name is Michelle Duvall and I'm the Mayor's Social Media Manager. I'm Rebecca Williams, Supervisor for Ceremonial Documents, home of Hashtag Proc Nation, okay? <laughs> and hello, hello, I'm Javelle Johnson, Deputy Press Secretary for the Mayor's Office of Communications. And I have the pleasure of introducing today's esteemed guest, Houston native and fearless leader, Houston Police Chief Troy Finner. Yay! Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Hey, look, I am so honored to be here today. Um, young women of power and intelligence and um, just a great show. So I am just honored to be here. Thank you for what y'all do, okay? And thank you for what you do. Yes. Yes. For taking the time. time. <laughs> you updated mayor and city council during the city council meeting on recruitment numbers, the reduction of crime due to the One Safe Houston initiative. Let's take a quick look at that clip. Uh, these stats for on, on this page, it, uh, April is included. There will not be the official stats. They still have to go through staff review. Uh, once uh, uh, Assistant Chief Martin goes over the, uh, um, the, the district stats and every council member, uh, those are the first quarter and that goes from uh, January um, to uh, March. But um, these are, um, April is included. Um, I also want to just pause, and, and you don't see her up here, but Melissa Commons is our data governance and uh, uh, planning uh, deputy director. Please stand if you, if you can, if you don't mind, right quick. I want to thank you for the hard work. Uh, sometimes we, you don't see the uniform, but that is a deputy director with our agency, and they work extremely hard. And I want to thank her for crunching numbers and doing, keeping us going and keeping us informed. Uh, also, uh, my team, my executive team is behind me. I want to thank each and every one of them for the hard work that they do. So let's get into the numbers right quick. Um, we had uh, two homicides last night, and I know the news is, is reporting on it, so I want to include those. Um, so if you add those numbers, we had 111. Instead of 28 percent, that drops us to 27 percent in murders. Rape is down 6 percent. Robbery is down 10 percent. Aggravated assault is down 12 percent. Kidnapping is down 19 percent. Human trafficking is down 23 percent. Overall violent crime in our city is down 12 percent. If you look at uh, property crimes, the auto theft is up 14 percent. Burglary is up 2 percent. Theft is down 10 percent. Nonviolent crime overall is down 5 percent. Grand total of all crime in our city is down 6 percent. Okay, can you talk to us about the One Safe Houston initiative and why it's so instrumental in reducing these crime numbers? Let me say, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the leadership in Houston. And that mm -hmm. starts with a great mayor, right. uh, a person who is, uh, love everybody, yeah. uh, but is tough on crime. <laughs> uh, and and, 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 and um, the mayor eats and sleeps and drains this city. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if the man ever sleeps, you know, and I also want to thank our council members, but moving back to One Safe Houston, um, you know, at the beginning of last year, crime numbers were just peaking, and, and I told them at the time, and after meeting with, mayor, with the mayor, because we talk about violent crime daily, mm -hmm. um, and these numbers are going in the right direction, and, and it started um, because of the support that we got from the mayor mm -hmm. and our city council and also our great citizens. Um, I also want to thank the men and women on the front line, and I mean both uh, classified and support, because right. if you're on the front line, that's who really putting the, the work in, right. okay? Um, but to uh, have a, uh, an overtime program that puts more officers out on the street, that's just one aspect of it, and you know, more investigators and, and, and more initiatives that we can do, but Mayor and his wisdom, mm -hmm. he saw that crime is really a social issue, Right. It's not something that we can just um, um, solve with just law enforcement. So he put everything in there and he funded it. You know, you know, a, a lot of things re regarding uh, people uh, suffering from mental illness. Right. Um, mm -hmm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, we were never trained as police officers to handle that by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, we do a pretty good job with it. But for him to put that kind of money into that also... Uh, um, treatment programs right. um, and violence interruption program all of that is 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 in it 
And I, I think that that's why, and when we say bipartisan, that's why you see the support um, that, that we have here in Houston. But as we got in, and, and residents working with the police officers and, and, and our social services partners. I also want to mention all of our local, state, and federal partners um, in, in law enforcement that it's not just HPD. Mm -hmm. It's everybody working it's together right, because yeah. it's very challenging. Everybody talked about the backlog, and it's still here. And when you have that amount of violent individuals out on the street, mm -hmm. we really have to come together. But the mayor and that one safe Houston uh, brought everybody together uh, with his vision, um, and, and I, I won't take that credit as, mm -hmm. as, as, as police chief. It was the mayor that came down and, and, and said, hey, you called it, Troy, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> I want to mention uh, my number two, Matt Slinker. He did a great job, and he's crafting a whole lot of stuff. But it was the mayor that kept saying when we send the plan back, and this is behind the scenes stuff right. that people yeah. need to know yeah, about. Yeah. Uh, I think six or seven times. And mayor, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying it, Mayor. Hey, no, send that back. I want this in here. But that's the greatness in, in his leadership. And it came down, and I want to say um, homicide numbers. Mm -hmm. That's what we get judged on as police chiefs mm -hmm. around the nation. It, it, it gets you hired and it can get you fired. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so much to it. Um, it is a thing where everybody has to pitch in and send those numbers down. I want to say that we're 26% down wow. from last wow. year to today. Awesome. Um, a lot of our crime numbers. I think sometime uh, next week we may uh, be coming before um, uh, council uh, mm -hmm. to announce some, some numbers, so I don't want to give all of them today and steal yeah. the thunder. But <laughs> I do want to mention that uh, as of today, and, and those numbers fluctuate. Right. Um, we also know that... Um, um, Violent crime, uh, you know, it has a tendency to peak um, yeah. some, during summer months. So we're bracing. And, and again, uh, I've talked to the mayor about it. I'm going to submit a plan uh, to uh, combat violent crimes and keep things under control because we want those numbers to continue to uh, go in the direction that they're going into. But I kind of hope that that answers some yeah, of it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so you said uh, violent numbers peak in summer. Is there a particular reason why? Well, it's hot, <laughs> and, and, and people, especially here in Houston, right. you know, That's and people right. upset. Yeah. You know, they, it, more people outside. Yeah. You know, don't know all of the reasons why, but traditionally those numbers they, they yeah. peak in the summer. Um, you got a lot more young people out. Right. But, um, and to another topic, and I don't want to get ahead of um, the questions, but um, <laughs> we have to uh, make sure that, that, that we are uh, invested in the youth program. Right. And that was yeah. a part of One Safe uh, Houston, Houston yeah. as, as well. People talk a lot of things about and, and say some negative things about the youth, but really what are we doing to invest in them? Right. Everybody so, wants to be loved, yes. and everybody wants some accountability. Now, uh, a very small fraction of individuals, and I'm talking about young adults, <laughs> middle age, and it, are people that have a bad, dirty heart, okay? Mm -hmm. right. And it's really uh, impossible to reform them um, when they don't want to be in, uh, reformed. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, but that's just a small percentage. Most youth, if we work with them, if we invest in them, mm -hmm. uh, if we reach them uh, where they are, a lot of times people don't talk in terms of the trauma that young yes. people experience, uh, and it's mostly in the, in the areas of color, okay? Right. And yeah. or if you're in the area and you're poor, mm -hmm. you don't have to be a person of color. Yeah. Um, you don't have the resources that, that you really need, and people don't think about this, and I, I talk about this. I, I, I was at a, a national uh, meeting uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, and I said in terms of, and people, and they were asking, well, well, what's going on with the youth? Why, why so much crime? I said, what's going on with society? Right. What's going on with our politics? Yeah. You know, what, what's, what's wrong with yeah. people That's telling right. the truth mm -hmm. and, and being honest about things? But one important thing that we fail to realize, some of these areas where it's underserved, there's not a support system. Mm -hmm. you, you got a kid, if he's witnessed his mother, you know, getting beat. Right. Or it's a homicide or a robbery or aggravated assault you know what we do we tuck them in the bed and we send them to school tomorrow right no with no right. counseling yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, nothing to address the trauma so w when we're looking at funding and we're looking at helping certain communities you know we got to look at those aspects right. you, you have to really look behind the crimes you know and, and right. what's really causing things and make sure that we're giving uh, every child uh, in our um, city, 
an opportunity to grow and, 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 and be a, a good adult. So, yeah. so critical. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, um, Chief, we love you because, and we love our mayor because there's so much passion um, behind what you do, the city that you serve, because you are a native here. Working with a mayor who is a Houston native, you know, from the fofo. -fo. <laughs> <laughs> He'll let you, you know. Yes, okay. <laughs> and, and you by way of Fifth Ward? Well, born in Fifth Ward, uh -huh. raised in Hiram Clark. There yeah, you go. So, and yeah, so yeah. you all grew up in this city, yeah. and so you all have a heartbeat for this city. Yeah. Tell me about your experience as the chief of police to be sitting in your seat now, coming from yeah. that young man in Fifth Ward, to be sitting where you're sitting now, working yeah. with a mayor who has the same heart as yours to change the city for the better. Well, what does that feel like? I, I think, first of all, we're a match. Uh, the mayor allows Troy Fenner to be Troy Fenner. Have and that's yeah. important to me, but I, I sit here today and I'm just bubbling with pride, yeah. with pride, uh, pride about my family, uh, what they mean and what they what they um, meant to me. My mom, she yeah. passed away a, a few months after I was appointed. Um, but uh, just going back, looking at that, and, and I, I went to a, a, a dentist uh, over the week, and and I wanted to I'm not gonna give the exact location, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> I wanted, and I told the dentist, I said, you know what? I'm going to come to this dentist. It's right in the middle of the neighborhood. And people need to see mm -hmm. their chief. Right. The young yes. kids, yes. they need to be able matters. to touch me. Yes. And, and, and what if, when I went in there and the little kids were coming up, it made me feel so good. But look, being a chief in a major city is, is challenging. Right. And um, the, the great thing with me uh, being born and raised here, I know this city. Yes. I know people. Mm -hmm. um, you have to know what, what moves people, what makes them happy, what makes them sad, what makes them angry. Yeah. Um, and when you know that and they know you and they trust you, trust you. Right. Um, we don't always agree. Right. And you know, I'm, I'm, um, I'm a no-nonsense guy, but I love people. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you the truth. If somebody is wrong, they're wrong. If they're right, they're right. right. And we just have to tell the truth about it. So um, people... Better than anything, they trust me, but I don't take that trust lightly. Mm -hmm. I don't take the, the relationships that I've developed uh, over the years, I don't take them lightly. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a lot of work. You got to get out there. And what a lot of people don't know, so many people have my phone number. You can ask my staff. It drives them crazy. Like, <laughs> gee, who is this lady? Who is this person calling? It's an important person in our city. Mm -hmm. Right. And it um, doesn't matter about money or, or a cloud, with, as we say, right. or, or influence. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's important to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't care each and every neighborhood. And I want the same for everybody. Right. I want the same opportunities. Um, I get a chance to, to, to visit with the billionaires in our city. Mm -hmm. And they're important. But, you know, the poor are the poor. are important mm -hmm. to me, too. Mm -hmm. Because right. they have a voice. And I think when people understand that they have a voice to me, and the officers understand the same thing because I can't just do community right. and have my officers thinking, uh -huh. you know what, I don't support them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not perfect. Right. And people have to understand that. They make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, you got to make split seconds decisions. And sometimes it's life and death. And it's difficult because it's dangerous out there for everybody. So um, I just want to. Um, and, and you look at our criminal justice system. Uh, when I first came in, and, and, and we still got a lot of work to do, things were just in turmoil. Mm -hmm. I can't sit up here as a chief and, and attack my DA and attack the judges. And I'll, it's not going to do anything. Um, we we got to build relationships, and we got to get through this backlog and other challenges that right. we have. So you do that in a way of being respectful, mm -hmm. but being true. That's it. Tell people, you know, hey, look, it is what it is. Right. I mean, so. Okay. Is key, absolutely. Yeah. So, Chief, you spoke to this earlier in terms of unity and, and just collaboration and partnership as it pertains to the One Safe Houston plan. Can you talk a little bit more about the community partnership and the allyship and some of those you, like, key stakeholders? You, you cannot do anything um, without community in the way of law enforcement uh, in the 21st century. Let me share something with you that's so important to me. People asked us, well, you know, after George Floyd, everything happened in that city, mm -hmm. but it came here because Mr. Floyd is ours. Yeah. He was born and raised here, okay? So everything came back. So you remember when 
everybody say, oh, y'all had over 60,000. No, I think we had closer to 80,000 people downtown. I know my city. Mm -hmm. But we had a few knuckleheads. We had a few incidents. But it ended pretty well. And let me tell you why. People don't realize, and I, and I share this with my colleagues around the nation, you had reformed gang members, you had the hip-hop community, you had everybody standing side by side with the police, okay, and saying, we're not going to let outside people, outside agitators come in and tear our city down. Yeah. So they, help us, they helped us keep order, and that's important. Those are those relationships, you know, not only with One Safe Houston, but it's an everyday of building relationship, picking that phone up, you know, when somebody calls you. They don't have to be important. Right. And, and it's also understanding the importance of, of people who have been in something, through something, I meant to say, uh, in their lives. And it could be a conviction. Mm -hmm. It could be form a gang member, mm -hmm. form a drug. But when those individuals are truly reformed, those are some powerful people that yeah. can really help yeah. you. And we devalue them. And sometimes when we're doing programming, uh, and, and, and I share this with my colleagues around the nation, don't look past some of those people. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you, this is a criminal justice system. We've got to make sure everything is on the up and up. Right. But give people an opportunity that's been through some difficult times mm -hmm. to share that with young men and young women to help them and help your police department. Right. So uh, I talk to everybody. Right. And it's uncomfortable to some people. I know it <laughs> yeah. is, but I, I'm like, look, uh, I don't go out. I didn't go out when I was young. <laughs> I'm 56. I shared that with y'all. <laughs> so I don't do clubbing now, you know. But it's about people. It's about reaching people where they are, giving people a hand up, not a hand out. Mm -hmm. Hand out don't help, right. okay? Hand up, you empower people to, you know, help themselves and, 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 and reform themselves and then help the entire community. So right. um, it's all about relationships. And, and, and building it and you got to be transparent you talk about transparency the very first thing that I shared with the mayor and thank uh, he supported it I said mayor we can't have technology we can't have body worn cameras and, and we're not releasing that I said the community is calling for it I said I want a policy where within 30 days mm -hmm. max mm -hmm. of all officer involved shootings that we can release within the law mm -hmm. I want them out there yeah. I don't right. care good or bad mm -hmm. get them out there and let's let's talk about them so yeah that's uh, uh, Rebecca I think it's time come on now I think it's time we ready so, we have, so it's game time so we have a game here called 520 okay, okay. you're going to answer five questions in 20 Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> now, Rebecca and Jamel are going to ask the questions, and I'm going to keep time to keep us transparent and honest, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right. Transparent. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will start the time after Rebecca asks. Oh, well, Jamel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's the first question, so let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. You're ready? All mm -hmm. right. Let's go. So, Chief, what's one thing you say to yourself before you start each work day? I pray. How many One Safe Houston initiatives have been executed thus far? At least 20. How many mentors have you had over the course of your profession? Many mentors, um, a few special ones. Okay. How many years have you served the city of Houston? 33 years. Wow. And lastly, how many times? Oh, oh, wow. That was him. It was wow. You almost on the wow. Blame it on me. Let me tell you something. You answered the three, most questions in 20 years. seconds than anybody else. No, has. seriously, you, you, you pretty much won, Chief. <laughs> That's impressive. But you, just go ahead and ask your question. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Keeping it honest, we're over time. Not but right. just, just curious, how many total HPD officers under your reign currently? It's uh, a little bit of them under 5,200. Wow. We're the fifth largest agency in the nation. And we need to be uh, the third. Again, so, yeah. okay. impressive, right. impressive wow. numbers. That was oh really, that was a really, really, that good, was really good. Come on, yeah. so you know sometimes people are, are a bit skeptical of the gun buyback programs. Can you talk to us about how many guns have been taken off the street and potentially saved lives due to all three yes. gun buyback events we've had so far? Thanks for saying mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Thanks for saying <laughs> that. Look, over twenty one hundred um, um, guns taken off the street, and people. Look, if you don't have a solution, I don't want to say shut up, you know. <laughs> I'm just going to say sit down and be quiet right. because there are a lot of solutions, okay. Right. Have you ever thought about it and people say, well, criminals not going to turn in their guns. Okay, get it. But if somebody is suffering from mental illness in your house and mm -hmm. you know it, right. 
wouldn't it be safe and it's common sense? Well, hey, chief, we just want to remove these guns. Mm -hmm. What about a safe place for me to go and take them? Mm -hmm. I don't want to sell them. I just want to give them to the police to, to just to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Right. What is wrong with that? Mm -hmm. Nothing. And some people <laughs> have a lot of guns around their homes. They, a relative has died who used to keep up with the guns, go mm -hmm. hunting with them. Right. What is wrong if nobody, so you just leave them there yeah. for somebody to break in and take them? Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. So I don't get into that political craziness. Yeah, right. You know, I'm a common sense guy, and I'm glad our mayor and other leaders are. And if, look, if they want to give some money for people to bring guns in, and here, here's the deal. Every gun that's bought in, we track. We track it. You know, we 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 test it. We test fire and whatnot, making sure that it's not involved in any other. And people say, "Well, gee, why y'all not getting uh, um, uh, identification for when people bring it in? What is the goal? Get right, the guns, the okay? Yeah, yeah, get yeah. the guns. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah, the guns. Yeah. And so I I, I support it. Uh, there's a lot of other things that can be done, and I don't want to get into that. Right. We're not taking guns away from people. We're not, you know, trying to tax somebody's uh, right. constitutional rights right. or whatnot. It's just, but if people want to try, turn in guns, make a safe place where um, they can just turn uh, th those guns in. And, right. and we're, we're going to do another one this summer sometime. Yeah. <laughs> I know the mayor's going to be uh, announcing the date. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm going to let him do that. I don't want to steal his thumb. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Save so, a little bit. Talk yeah. more to yeah. later. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, yeah. there you have it, folks. Uh, from Impact Stats on Crime Reduction to Community Partners, we hope you all are a bit more versed about the One Safe Houston plan mm -hmm. and our amazing Houston Police Chief, Troy Finner. Thank you all so much again. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here with you all. All right, well, thank you guys for tuning in this week. Um, always remember to follow us on social, and we'll catch you on next week on The Horseshoe.